I think Mike Pompeo will be a truly great Secretary of State. I have total confidence in him. Yet another shakeup at the White House as President Trump fires his top diplomat. Hello, I'm Arlen Naidu, and this is The Heat. That they have been at odds over a number of policy issues was an open secret in Washington. Still, it came as a bit of a surprise when U.S. President Donald Trump took to Twitter to announce the ouster of his Secretary of State, choosing CIA Director Mike Pompeo to replace him. Rex Tillerson spoke briefly following the announcement of his pending departure. My commission as Secretary of State will terminate at midnight, March the 31st. Between now and then, I will address a few administrative matters related to my departure and work towards a smooth and orderly transition for Secretary of State designate Mike Pompeo. There is much to talk about. Let's get right to our panel. Joining us here in Washington is the executive director of the ANSWER Coalition, Brian Becker. With us from Tampa is author and commentator Dan Perkins. Paula von Chirac is the president of the Global Policy Institute here in Washington. And also with us is my colleague CGTN, Nathan King. And Nathan, another day of drama in Washington, <laughs> it seems. <laughs> Isn't a day that goes by with something dramatic happening? Rex Tillerson fired, Mike Pompeo the replacement. Take us through what happened today. It, yeah, I mean, you know, it's not a surprise that Rex, Rex Tillerson has gone. But the way he was gone and... Uh, the fact that it happened now is surprising. We know that there's been a lot of criticism of him almost from day one uh, by the US president, almost like he doesn't like anyone being on the world stage if it's not Donald Trump. Uh, and he's been criticised over everything to do with his support for the Iran nuclear deal, uh, to his wanting to negotiate over the DPRK, look how that's turned around, um, uh, to other matters behind the scenes, for example, not wanting a big fight in the Middle East uh, with Qatar and, and Saudi Arabia and others. And at each turn, he has been basically uh, out-tweeted by the president. But also, this is a tough job from the start. Remember, the portfolio of Secretary of State is for foreign affairs, but some jobs have been given to Jared Kushner, some uh, to other people. Uh, the president freelances on his own. So we knew this day was coming. Why he was fired now is the open question. He just finished a very grueling Africa tour yeah. and then basically found out as he landed. There was a report that this was in the pipeline in November last year. Well, it was because he called reportedly, although many reporters have found this out, that he called uh, uh, President Trump a moron. Uh, he wouldn't be the first to do that within his administration, but he was caught doing it. Um, uh, but the relationship has never been warm. But then suddenly he's been giving interviews over the last couple of weeks and in Africa and on the plane in Africa to State Department journalists, all saying that he expects to be uh, there throughout uh, 2018. And, you know, it, you don't send your Secretary of State on a tour to Africa where you have to mend relations because of things you've said as president uh, and then want to fire him while he's basically essentially doing it. So the question is what happened, and there's, uh, the rumour swirling Washington today is it because of uh, his pointing the finger at Russia over the death of this former agent in London uh, with chemical weapons, and the White House wasn't even ready to point the finger at Russia uh, 24 hours ago. And This may have been the break. Paolo, why do you think Rex Tillerson lost his job? Was it personality differences, major policy differences, or a combination of all of Look, that? Look, I think it's really a combination of both. Uh, I think uh, that uh, Tillerson came to the job with his own aura and uh, with his own international cachet of negotiation, having negotiated over so many years as the CEO of ExxonMobil, mega deals around the world, including Russia, by the way, where there seemed to be, at the time, at least a fairly warm relations with uh, with Mr. Putin when, when Exxon was, uh, was uh, quite present in the, in the energy uh, scene in, in Russia. Uh, but yes, as, a, as, a, as my colleague here just pointed out, there are policy differences from climate change that, you know, Tillerson didn't want 
the United States to withdraw from the Paris Agreement, uh, uh, to you know negotiations which he encouraged with the North Korea, and then the President said, "You're wasting your time." And then, of course, now we know these things uh, took their own momentum in the opposite direction. Uh, against uh, the tariffs, which were announced uh, just a few days ago, which caused the departure of the of the domestic policy advisor, economic policy advisor. Uh, Gary, oh, a, a bunch of things in which uh, there seem to be policy differences, personality difference, and certainly the insult uh, that, uh, you know, I don't think uh, Trump forgot about that one, uh, prompted uh, the, this uh, hasty departure. Of course, the timing couldn't be worse. We're just here, we just we heard that we're going to initiate uh, negotiations, and we don't know exactly leading to what with North Korea, the Secretary of State is gone, there is no ambassador in Seoul, there is no negoti you know, chief negotiator for the two Koreas, many, many jobs, and this is something that also falls on, you know, on Tiller's own shoulders, uh, at the State Department have not been filled, mm. right. not because they haven't been confirmed, but some have never, never been nominated, right. nobody right. is there. Okay. So how did he run this shop, it's kind of a mystery. But be that as it may, I think uh, the two personalities didn't, didn't gel, and so it's no surprise that he didn't make it. Okay, let's bring in Dan Perkins. He's in Tampa. And Dan, what do you make of these latest personnel changes in the Trump administration? Should we be surprised that Rex Tillerson was shown the door? No, I don't think so. I, and I think he, there were problems, but I had said very early on that when he was selected, I thought that Mr. Tillerson was there specifically to assist the American oil industry in finding export markets. And uh, clearly, that's happened uh, with, with the Asian markets being large consumers of American oil and now coal. Um, but th that relationship is pretty well solid. Uh, when it began to, to look like there were going to be challenges, uh, if you don't have the confidence of the president, uh, it's, they're very difficult to serve. I think the last gentleman who made the comment about open positions, uh, I've heard that for a long time. Is it wasn't an issue of getting them confirmed. They were just never filled. And um, that doesn't bode well for the executive, the, the person who's in charge of the State Department. Right. Because he needs those resources. Dan, personality difference is one thing, policy differences as well. But look at the image that this sends to the rest of the world. I mean, uh, is it fair to say that this looks like a White House that's in complete disorder, in complete chaos? I don't think I can agree with that. Uh, I, th I think what it says is that Mr. Trump is looking for people as a business person who are productive and continually productive. If you cannot produce, you don't have a job. Oh, sorry, I was shaking my head. I come to the White House every day, and that's just not true. Okay. Um, uh, if you're a businessman, you want to reward people who are good. The, the turnover in this White House has been yeah. so dramatic. If it was a turnover on a business, it would probably file for bankruptcy. Uh, you do not see this kind of churn without something dramatically being wrong. And we're not just right. talking about AIDS here. We're talking about uh, your, your national security advisor, the secretary of state, uh, your communications director yeah. several times, okay. uh, the press secretary. I could go on and on. You know that. Brian, President Trump referred specifically to uh, the Iran nuclear deal when he was talking about his differences with Rex Tillerson. Let's listen to what the president had to say. Rex and I have been talking about this for a long time. Uh, we, we got along actually quite well, but we disagreed on things. When you look at uh, the Iran deal, I think it's terrible. I guess he thought it was OK. I wanted to either break it or do something, and he felt a little bit differently. So we were not really thinking the same. With Mike, Mike Pompeo, we have a uh, very similar thought process. I think it's going to go very well. So that specific reference there to the Iran deal, is that deal now on life support? Uh, yeah. Uh, Donald Trump has until May 12th to either certify or not certify Iran's compliance. The IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, says Iran is completely in compliance. So do the other signers to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. But Donald Trump wants to sabotage and, and end this, this agreement. And he's looking for a pretext. Uh, Mike Pompeo was a war hawk when it comes to Iran. When he was in Congress, he, like Donald Trump, was using the language, this is the worst deal ever. Uh, and so he has in Mike Pompeo a kindred spirit. Uh, you know, uh, Barack Obama was trying to pivot towards Asia, which meant 
coming out of the deep commitment to, U to Middle East confrontations. Uh, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action was partly to do that, to, to refocus on, on Asia and to refocus on China. Donald Trump and the entourage around him don't see it that way. They've expanded the war in Syria. They've expanded America's military footprint in Iraq. And now they're, they're aching for a confrontation with, the joint co with, uh, with Iran, which I think will happen. Uh, that doesn't mean necessarily a military confrontation, but there's going to be an upping of the ante. And I think that's what really is behind this, uh, this uh, change right now. Uh, Trump is getting ready for confrontation with Iran. Uh, Tillerson's not equipped for it because he doesn't agree with it. And Mike Pompeo does. Dan, I'll get to you in a moment, Paolo. Dan, what do you make of that? Was, uh, did the differences of Iran play a major role in Rex Tillerson's departure? Uh, I, would, I, would, I would agree that, that he clearly was not on the same page as the president. The president said during his entire campaign that he thought it was a, the, the Iran deal was a bad deal. Uh, for him to always say, say, no, it was a great deal, it would be difficult for him to walk that back. Uh, but clearly his Secretary of State did not agree with him as it relates to the Iran deal and other policy issues. And at some point in time, the president has to decide whether he's going to keep that advisor and, and keep to his own ideas, or is he going to get rid of that advisor and find somebody who feels at least and thinks the way he does to, uh, to take over the implementation of his ideas. Okay. Paula? Well, it, here's the thing, you know, you, it's nice to have a kindred spirit, you know, a state that thinks just like the boss. That's great. And I, that makes for better harmony, perhaps a more, you know, a clearer, if nothing else, uh, you know, position of the United States vis-a-vis uh, -vis the rest of the world. It's not that one day the White House says one thing, state says another thing, defense says another thing, the ambassador to the United Nations yet another thing, which has been kind of the motif of this administration. So the fact that, that uh, Mr. Trump has just hired himself a secretary of state who thinks like him, okay, maybe that's a good thing. It's an However, apprentice. He's an apprentice. Indeed, yes. until, until he gets fired, too. But here's the thing. Hmm. What is the end game? I really fail to understand what it is. Mr. Trump has said at the very beginning when he was campaigning, et cetera, enough of all this stuff he was against, and he's on record of being, having been against the war in Iraq, which indeed turned out to be a fiasco. But the question is this. We are uh, some, at some level in Syria doing what? Exactly. What is the end game? Does America have a, an idea of what he will want to want to see the final outcome in Syria? And if so, what resources is America prepared to deliver on the ground right. to make that happen? And if indeed the Iran deal is such a bad deal, which you know it's subject for open for discussion, what next? Let's say he decertifies uh, Iran, and we say we're out of this thing. The Europeans are not out, the Chinese are not out, the Russians are not out, so but what I, but happens? I, but, I, but I think that... It, it doesn't change anything. I, I think even though the Europeans want to stay in, you can see that both Britain and France, yeah. and to some extent Germany, are now bending towards Trump's desires, and they're trying, and, and Trump is going to put an ultimatum. Do you want to do business with the Iran Central Bank, or do you want to do business with America? They're going to make a choice. We'll do business with America, even though they think this is a mistake. Uh, and and um, what well, the plan at the moment is, is to basically add to the um, uh, joint protocol uh, something on missile defense, something on uh, missiles uh, from Tehran, something on their behavior in the region that isn't binding in, in that already agreed to document, but is somehow separate, signed by uh, the powers but, that but signed on. And that may well happen. And that the Iranians won't accept it, but France and Britain and perhaps Germany will go along, and that will be I, I the shattering of the with, deal. Yeah, I wouldn't count on it. I wouldn't say, oh, they will go along. They, they, so far, all the noises we heard from Europe is that they will not go along. Now, they're, you know... I know they, the French say that they, Macron says some very positive things about it. Yeah, yeah. but still, here's the thing. Uh, the United States uh, starts with the idea we are disengaging from conflicts from from uh, from the Middle East. We've done too much stuff. Uh, right. We you know we want to yeah. take care of ourselves at home, etc. Right. And then we are in. We're redoubling in Afghanistan. We are. We say we're going to do things in Syria. We don't know with what. And then we are going to ha engage head on with Iran. This is really a, a complete uh, a switch on the positions of the president.